If you've been outside in the past few weeks, you'll have noticed that winter has definitely arrived. So, with that in mind, I thought we'd take a look at Australia's only alpine railway, the Perisher Ski Tube. The Ski Tube is a standalone railway located in the snowy mountains in southern New South Wales at the Perisher Ski Resort. It's an impressive and unique piece of infrastructure, the only one of its kind in Australia, and yet many people have never heard of it. Its job is to provide transport between Bullock's Flat, located in the valley below the resort, to the ski fields at Perisher Valley, the main village for the resort, as well as Blue Cow, another area of the mountain. Perisher is now a well-established ski resort, the largest in the Southern Hemisphere, with 47 lifts serving 1,245 hectares of skiable terrain across its four resort areas of Perisher, Blue Cow, Guthica and Snugan Holes. Some of these areas have operated as separate ski resorts in the past, but are now all owned and operated under the brand Perisher, with their runs and lifts interconnected. The 1980s saw a major increase in development in the area, with the then three resort areas of Perisher, Guthaga and Smigan Holes all expanding, as did the popularity of alpine skiing. With all this expansion, many issues were faced by the resort. One being the need for new facilities to address the growing skier population, and the other for better access into the resort itself. Prior to the construction of Ski Tube, the only access point to the mountain was via Kosciuszko Road. This limited capacity as the road was and often is still affected by snow and ice. To increase access and capacity to the resort, several options were considered, including a funicular and several different cable lifts. However, all these options failed to meet the two most important criteria of a second point of access. They would still limit capacity, with each funicular, chair or gondola restricted to a certain number of passengers. They would also scar the landscape, located within the heritage-listed Kosciuszko National Park, as well as be affected by its cold weather. However, an option that met all these requirements was an electric rack railway proposed by Ken Bilson, running from Bullock's Flat into the resort. Each carriage could hold up to 225 passengers and would be able to withstand winter conditions, and as the majority of the railway would be underground, it would have little effect on the surrounding mountains. If you are unfamiliar with what a rack railway is, don't worry, I'll get to that in a minute. At this time, the National Parks and Wildlife Service was also investigating expanding the ski area in the Perisher Valley. Mount Blue Cow had been considered the best area for expansion. Ken Bilson proposed a railway run from Bullock's Flat to Perisher and the proposed new ski area at Blue Cow. He suggested this area to become a hub for day-only visitors, who were staying off mountain as they could catch the ski tube through Perisher and on to Blue Cow, meaning less crowding in the Perisher village and a more spread out distribution of skiers. This would solve Perisher's access problem in conjunction with a new ski area providing new facilities on the mountain, addressing both issues at once. It became the preferred option and is what is seen today. After feasibility studies were completed, a single track railway with passing loops between Bullock's Flat, Perisher and the new resort at Blue Cow commenced construction in October 1984. But before we run through the line and its construction, let's quickly discuss the special track it uses. The ski tube climbs from Bullock's Flat at 1,125 metres above sea level and terminates at Blue Cow at 1,905 metres above sea level. It climbs these 780 metres in just 8.5 kilometres, with grades as steep as 12.5% or 1 in 8, climbing a metre for every 8 metres gained in distance. Now, the steepest grades a train in Australia normally has to tackle are 1 in 30, so how does the ski tube manage 1 in 8? This is achieved by what is called a rack rail system. If you take a look at the track ski tube runs on, the standard two rails are present, as well as a third in the middle. This is what's known as a rack, and is a linear gear of toothed rail stretching the length of the line. Circular gears, known as pinions, are attached to the undercarriage of the train and slot into the teeth of the rack rail. This provides a third wheel, allowing the ski tube to tackle much steeper grades than a normal railway. The only other railway in Australia that currently uses sections of this system is the West Coast Wilderness Railway in Tasmania. So back to the construction and layout of the line. The lower terminal is situated at Bullock's Flat on Alpine Way, 
a 20 minute drive from the nearby town of Jindabyne. The terminal has three platforms, one island and one standalone, with two tracks running into them. There is also a maintenance depot located 200 metres northeast of the passenger terminal. 3,500 spaces for free day and overnight parking are found at Bullock's Flat, as well as 250 bus bays for the many services that run to the snow. Inside the terminal building is a large waiting area, toilets, ski hire, a cafe and a ticket office, where ski tube and lift tickets for the resort can be purchased. High carts are available and can be taken on the train, which is handy for those with skis and luggage. After the train leaves the terminal, it runs above ground for the first 2.6 kilometres. It turns left shortly after the terminus, passing the workshop and crossing the Threadbow River, and begins to climb the lower hills of the Ramshead Range. It curves around in a fishhook shape running over an impressive 150 metre long three span bridge and enters the Bilston passing loop. The loop ends and at 1,335 metres, the train enters the 3.3 kilometre long Bilston Tunnel. The train climbs a 12.5% gradient all the way to the end of the tunnel where Ski Tube's first stop, Perisher, is located. It's here that the line's second passing loop is found, the track splitting into two again, running into one island and one standalone platform. Unlike at Bullock's Flat, the platforms here are underground. Above, in the Perisher Terminal building, you'll find toilets, shops, lockers, ski hire, medical and emergency services, and the post office. The station is just a short walk away from the Front Valley Ski Area and the Perisher Centre. Oversnow transport also runs from the terminal, transporting guests to ski lodges and the nearby Charlotte's Pass Resort. This section of the line was the first part of Ski Tube to open, with construction commencing October 1984 and tunnelling in June the next year. The 3.3km long Bilston Tunnel was built using a 5.5m wide tunnel boring machine. The full 5.9km line from Bullock's Flat to Perisher opened to passengers on the 26th of July 1987. After Perisher Station, the line diverges back into one track and enters the line's second tunnel, appropriately named Blue Cow Tunnel. It climbs for 1.3km at a 3% grade and then another 1.3km at a 12.5% grade reaching the terminus at Blue Cow, 1,905 metres above sea level. This makes Blue Cow the highest railway station in terms of elevation in Australia. The singular platform here is also underground, and above it in the Blue Cow terminal are shops, toilets, lockers, ski hire and ski patrol. Step outside and you're right in the heart of the ski fields, with many runs and lifts nearby. The tunnel from here to Perisher was constructed with a drill and blast method, resulting in a much rockier finish. The line to Blue Cow was officially opened on the 31st of March 1988, fully completing the Ski Tube Railway, climbing 780 metres and at its steepest point, 550 metres underground. As this part of the project was delivered late, and the new ski area at Blue Cow had already opened before the railway, we did end up with this slightly confused buses for a while. Signals, rolling stock and overhead wiring for the railway were provided by a combination of Swiss companies and the Australian company Comeng, or Commonwealth Engineering. A total of 11 carriages were built, 4 motorcars, 4 driving trailers and 3 non-driving trailers. Motorcars are fitted with 4 301 kW traction motors, making trains capable of 40 km per hour. Two substations were built to power the line, which runs on 1,500 volts. Track use for the construction was second-hand rail from the State Rail Authority. Since its opening, Ski Tube has transported over 4 million passengers. So what do its operations look like today? Ski Tube only operates during the ski season in the winter months, this year between June the 11th and October the 3rd. 
There are four different types of ticket for the ski tube. A daily return ticket, which provides access between Bullock's Flat and Perisher. An overnight return ticket, which gives access to the same stations with the ticket holder needing to return within 14 days. And a season pass, which provides access between Bullock's Flat, Perisher and Blue Cowl all season long. The last is a sightseeing ticket, which provides the user with one return trip between Bullock's Flat and Perisher and unlimited travel between Perisher and Blue Cow. Purchasing a lift ticket also gives you unlimited access on the ski tube between Perisher and Blue Cow, and for an extra price between Bullock's Flat and Perisher. The prices of all these tickets depend on the time in the season, and they include free national park entry and parking. Ski tube trains are timetabled into two different services. Bullock's Flat to Perisher and Perisher to Blue Cow, as well as the return versions of these. This means that if a person wishes to travel the entire length of the line, they will need to change trains at Perisher. To do this, the platforms have been set up in a convenient way. As mentioned before, Perisher Station has three platforms but only two tracks, meaning both platforms 1 and 2 serve one track and 3 the other. Say you are travelling from Bullock's Flat to Blue Cow. When you arrive at Perisher, those disembarking would exit to the left, and those continuing on to Blue Cow would exit onto the island platform to the right, where a connecting train to Blue Cow would be located on the adjacent track. This makes changing trains to continue on to Bullock's Flat or Blue Cow a much easier process, and is what's known as the Spanish solution. So how frequent do trains operate? Currently, between Bullock's Flat and Perisher, services begin at 5.30am, running every half hour till 7am, then approximately every 20 minutes between 7 till 11 a.m. Between 11 and 3, trains run half hourly, then back to roughly every 20 minutes from 3 till 6, an hour late to the end of the day. The last three services at 8, 9 and 10 p.m. will only run if requested. The timetable from Parish to Blue Cow is pretty much the same, with trains operating approximately 10 to 15 minutes later to meet connecting services at Perisher. Services operate between 5.43am and 9.11pm. Services on the return versions of these routes are also the same levels of frequency, with services from Blue Cow to Perisher operating between 6.02am and 9.24pm, and services from Perisher to Bullock's Flat operating between 6.12am and 10.32pm, with the 8, 9 and 10.32pm services running on request only. It takes 10 minutes between Bullock's Flat and Perisher and 7 more to Blue Cow. Like the tickets, the timetables may vary throughout the season. The Ski Tube provides a convenient way for day trippers and people staying overnight to access the Perisher Resort, as well as provide skiers and snowboarders with easier access to the Blue Cow area. It's a unique and impressive piece of engineering, an alternative to driving on snowy roads, a relaxing trip into the mountains, and Australia's Alpine Railway.